What's going on there YouTube and welcome to Fresh Comic Stories. Guys, this is the channel where we basically sit down and cover different kinds of comic book stories. Now, guys, today we are going to jump into some more Ultimate Marvel and continue with our Ultimate Marvel reading order. Now, guys, today we're going to pick up with Ultimate Spider-Man and we're going to cover the Deadpool storyline. Now, honestly, I really do like this storyline a lot because we get Deadpool in the Ultimate Marvel Universe. And honestly, I like this Deadpool. He's crazy, just like his main Marvel counterpart, but he is completely different from his main Marvel counterpart. And that's why I like this character right here. And I hope you guys do as well. But please, Hit that like button down below and also subscribe for more comic book stories in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read will let me know in the comments below. But guys, let's dive into Ultimate Spider-Man, the Deadpool storyline. So we pick up with Spider-Man fighting against the Ringer, which his real name is Anthony Davis. Now in the main Marvel Universe, the Ringer was a character who got cybernetic upgrades to use in battle. But the Ringer was a character most people did not care about in the main Marvel Universe. But here in the Ultimate Universe, his powers are based on him throwing a bunch of rings as a way to battle against his foes. Now, Brian Michael Bendis used this as a way to remind us as well that Kitty Pry is still the girlfriend of Peter Parker. Matter of fact, she does join in on the fight as well to help Spider-Man fight against the Ringer. This is not anything special really, just introducing another character in the Ultimate Marvel Universe. But Kitty Pryde and Spider-Man are able to take him out very quickly. Now this is the point where to me you have Spider-Man and Kitty Pryde relationship start to fall apart because the way they interact with each other after taking out the Ringer, they start to ask the question on how they're going to keep this going because they do have some complications with their relationship with the fact that Kitty Pride is an X-Men. The whole world knows about her and her teammates. Plus, since she has been hanging around with Spider-Man, where the world is now starting to put together that she and Spider-Man are a couple, it leads into the question on how can they go on dates as Peter Parker and Kitty Pride without people figuring out that he is Spider-Man. But those questions get put on hold with the X-Jet arriving to pick up Kitty Pride to take her home to the X-Mansion. Now, when she gets back home to the X-Mansion, she realizes that something is off because when she walks in, the whole place is quiet, which is really unusual for the school. But when she goes into the kitchen, she runs into Wolverine in the kitchen, which out of nowhere, he pulls out a knife and tries to attack her. And so she escapes into another room by phasing through the wall. But then she runs into Storm. But just like Wolverine, Storm tries to attack Kitty Pride as well. And so you have Kitty escape into another room to get away. Now she does phase down to the sub level of the X Mansion and tries to reach the main computer so she can call in for some kind of help. The problem is though, when she phased through the computer, the computer short circuit and she was only able to send out the X jet before a bunch of people come from behind and knock her out. But with the X-Jet being sent out for help before Kitty Pryde passed out, at the home of Peter Parker and Aunt May, Peter is saying goodbye to Aunt May when she is about to go out on her date. But then he sees out his window in the distance, he sees the X-Jet back at the same place it picked Kitty Pryde up from. And so you have him swing over there to see maybe Kitty Pryde is back for something are the slight chance something is wrong. But when he changes into his Spider-Man outfit and swings over there to see what is going on, he sees that the X-Jet is empty, 
but then the X-Jet closes its doors trapping Spider-Man inside, which then of course flies him back over to the X-Mansion. But when he gets there and sees that the school is too quiet, he decides to walk in to see if everything is okay. But then he gets knocked out by who he thinks is Kitty Pride, but comes to find out it is actually someone who has the ability to change their appearance. Where we find out it was Deadpool. This is the first appearance of Ultimate Deadpool in Marvel Comics. Now, when Spider Man wakes up, he sees that him and the X-Men are all trapped in cuffs and they are riding in a helicopter. That's when he gets another look at Deadpool and his fellow teammates with him as well. But before he is able to ask a question or even try to break out of his handcuffs, Deadpool knocks Spider-Man back out again until they get to their destination. Of course, when they do get there, you have Deadpool wake everyone up for the next part of his plan, which is kicking all the X-Men and Spider-Man out of the chopper and they are falling head first towards a random island. Now, of course, you have Spider-Man able to save himself before hitting the ground hard. Now, the big question is though, where in the world are they? Because Spider-Man has no idea where he is and right now he has to find other people on his side to figure out what in the world is going on. But when he is trying to break out of his cuffs, he gets attacked from behind by a random half man, half machine looking dude. Now, of course, Spider-Man is able to use his powers and web shooters to defend himself against this random man. He then runs into Colossus, which of course, Colossus is trying to calm Spider-Man down because Spider-Man is freaking out about the whole situation at the moment. But you have Colossus also state the fact that he has no idea where he is at either right now. But you have Colossus point out that they need to find other people so they can work as a team to get somewhere safe. But that is when they see a random optic beam in the air, which tells them it is Cyclops who needs help. Which when they do find him, he is fighting against another man who has machinery body parts. But thanks to Spider-Man and Colossus, they were able to save him and get rid of the machinery looking dude. But then you have Storm appear as a way to show Colossus Spider-Man and Cyclops where they are now. They are back on Krakoa and I know I'm going to mispronounce this name so many times. Now Krakoa is something we saw back in Ultimate X-Men videos. Krakoa is an island where a TV show is done on where mutants are hunted for entertainment. We talk about how Krakoa is completely different from the main Marvel Universe because in the main Marvel Universe Krakoa is a being that is actually alive and plays a big role in Giant Size X-Men number one, where we got the new X-Men team from. But in Ultimate Marvel, it's just an island that a TV show uses for its show that is run by Mojo. But the X-Men, the last time they were here, they shut the island down and went back home. But it looks like the show is back up running again with Deadpool and his fellow mates being the new people who hunt mutants down. Now, Spider-Man, Colossus, and Storm, and Cyclops, sorry, do find the rest of the X-Men, but as soon as they regroup with one another, Deadpool and his fellow mates begin their second waves of attack. Now, the third chapter is literally used as a way to explain the origin of Deadpool while he is fighting against the X-Men and Spider-Man for the TV show. But we learned that Deadpool's name is Wadey Wilson, but Deadpool fought in the Wakanda Wars and apparently he was badly injured in that war. But he was lucky enough that he was given cybernetic parts to give him another chance in life. But with his hatred of mutants and finding Mojo Television, the cybernetic parts that he received gave him different forms of abilities to be able to hunt down the mutants he was hired to kill. 
Now, the people who are with Deadpool, they are going by the name The Reavers, but they are just like Deadpool in a way, where Deadpool was injured and given parts for a second chance of life. These guys want to help kill mutants so bad, they gave up their bodies to these new cybernetic parts to help the TV show kill off the mutants. Now, this is a little bit different from the main Marvel Universe, where in the main Marvel Universe, the Reavers are actually a bunch of people with cybernetic enhancements, but they actually work with the Hellfire Club instead. The Reavers in the X-Men comics in the main Marvel Universe play a huge role in the X-Men comics. That is even where Lady Deathstrike came from as well, who plays a semi-important role in Wolverine's Rogue Gallery. But in the Ultimate Marvel Universe, the Reavers don't get that much love as they do in the main Marvel Universe. But jumping back into the battle, you have the X-Men and Spider-Man trying their best to stop Deadpool and the Reavers. All of this is being played right now on live television right at this moment. But then you have some of the X-Men wonder, where is Charles Xavier? He's the only one who is not here at the moment. Does that mean they have been able to capture him as well? But that is when you have Spider-Man getting tired of everything. And so what he does is that he goes over and grabs Deadpool and unmasks him in front of everyone. But you have everyone stop fighting because after Spider-Man unmasks Deadpool, we see that Deadpool is supposed to be Charles Xavier. Somehow, Charles Xavier is Deadpool at this moment and everyone is so shocked about this reveal. Now, of course, we all know that this is not Charles Xavier, because if you remember back in the beginning of this story, Kitty Pride was hit by someone who could shapeshift. That person was Deadpool, and he has the ability to do that. But also, the fact that Spider-Man Spider-Sense has a way to help him figure out who is the fake and who is the real person. And so he knew right off the bat that this is not Charles Xavier. The real Charles Xavier is missing still and you had the battle between Deadpool and the X-Men continue on. But we learned that Charles Xavier has been kidnapped as well, except he is with Mojo in the main building away from the rest of the X-Men. Now, the story does wrap up with the X-Men and Spider-Man continuing their fight with Deadpool. And of course, the X-Men start to beat down on Deadpool and his Reavers in a hurry, which Deadpool gets taken out thanks to Kitty Pride. And since Kitty Pride has the ability to phase through things, when she phases through technology, she makes them short circuit and go all crazy. And since Deadpool's body is mostly cybernetic, when Kitty Pryde phases through his body, well, it makes Deadpool apparently explode, which takes him off the board. The rest of the X-Men were able to defeat the rest of the group of Reavers as well. And so now the X-Men main goal is to get to the main building and bring down the broadcast once again, hopefully to see if they can find Charles Xavier as well but you have the x-men able to get to the main building and begin looking for charles xavier which of course they do find him and they see that he was able to get away from mojo with all of that happening you have the x-men and spider-man take a plane to get off the island and go home but while they are flying off we see that deadpool did survive after he exploded but here's the big thing though, we won't see Deadpool ever again. If I remember correctly, we never see Deadpool in another Ultimate Marvel comic ever again. I think he only appears in Deadpool Kills Deadpool and that is really it. But the story wraps up with Kitty Pride walking Spider-Man home and this was supposed to be the moment where Peter Parker was supposed to tell Aunt May about him being Spider-Man. 
But when they both walk in, they find out real quick that Aunt May is not home. She is still out on her date with the man she went out with, which we come to find out it is Miles Warren, which is a name that is very important in the main Marvel comics with Spider-Man, basically the man behind the clone saga. But she is staying over his place for the night, and that is how the story really gets wrapped up. Now guys, this is the part where I basically sit down and give my thoughts on about this book. Now, when I was a young boy, I used to love this book, man. Like I would read part one, part two, three, and four over and over again, but I was a young boy. Now with me being an adult, I do realize a few things that are off about this storyline. And honestly, this is just me kind of nitpicking here. Now, the reason why I say I'm nitpicking is because Brian Michael Bendis, yes, he heard the idea of Krakoa being an island that a TV show uses to hunt down mutants. Okay, that's cool. But there are two characters who one, should not be here, or two, have no idea about Krakoa. And my prime example is Angel. Now guys, when you sit down and read this storyline, Angel is in this book. And that should not be happening because if you have been keeping up with my Ultimate X-Men videos, Angel is no longer an X-Men. Right now, Angel is over at Emma Frost School. And it's kind of like, wait a second, you can't have him here when he should be there because he left the X-Men or technically he's right now undercover at Emma Frost School by Charles Xavier. So it's kind of like, why is Angel here for? He should not be here and Brian Michael Bendis should have known that. And the reason why I say that again, because Angel left the X-Men and right after that, Kitty Pride and Peter Parker started dating, which means that if Kitty Pride and Spider-Man are dating, Angel has been gone from the X-Men for a good period of time. And the question is though, why is he here now? To me, that's kind of weird. Number two, Storm. Now, Storm should have no idea what Kakoa looks like. When Cyclops, Colossus, and Peter Parker ask her, hey, do you know where in the world are we right now? And she says, yes, we are at Kakoa. How would she know what it looks like? Because she was not there at all. Her and Wolverine were absent from the team when this storyline happened originally because Wolverine got so mad at Rogue, you know, leaving the X-Men to go be with Gambit that Wolverine just left and Storm followed him. And so while those two were gone, the original storyline that involved this TV show on Krakoa happened. They were gone. So Storm should have no idea what in the world Krakoa looks like. And to me, it's kind of like, okay, listen, maybe you should have not done this or possibly done a few things differently. Because to me personally, it was kind of like, wait a second, how would she know? Wait a second, why is Angel here for? These two things should not happen at all. But honestly, that's really it. It's still a good storyline. There's a few things here and there. It's kind of like, wait, Brian, you can't have that happen nor that happened as well either. This is weird. Besides that, this is a good storyline. Now guys, I'm gonna go ahead in today's video. So guys, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe for more comic book stories in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, well, let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But guys, I'm out of here and I'll see you in the next comic book video. Later guys.